Welcome to another episode of Dollars and Cents tonight. My name is Timothy and today we have a very interesting topic that we would like to discuss. Taxes are essentially wealth transfer from the richer to the not so rich. So why do most people, like us, hate it so much? Joining us in this controversial discussion today is none other than Dinesh, the co-founder of Dollars and Cents, and Kang Hyung, the lead content editor of Dollars and Cents. Guys, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Happy to be here. Do you guys like or hate taxes? Yeah, I think hate is a strong word. Um, so I don't necessarily hate taxes, but I can see why some people will feel unhappy to see tax bills at the end of the year. Uh, I still remember the first time I received a notice that I need to file income tax, and I was pleasantly surprised at the very low tax bill that I had to pay. So I think statistically, about half of Singapore workers don't actually pay any income tax. Probably, obviously, when you do better in your careers, your tax bill starts going up. And uh, naturally, you know, you may not be so pleased about that because you might feel like you're being penalized for succeeding in life. Will you agree that taxes are evil? I think evil is a really strong word. Uh, perhaps maybe a bitter pill might be a more appropriate way to describe it. But Swallowing that bitter pill, uh, you know, no one likes it, you know, it, but it has to be done. I agree with Kang Hyung, evil is a strong word. Um, I think sometimes it's easy to paint something as evil if you don't fully understand it. So maybe if you kind of pay more attention to what is being spent on with your taxes, then you appreciate it a little bit more and maybe the word evil won't be used as much. Based on uh, FY 2018 operating revenues, besides income tax, which is about 16% of, uh, of, of all taxes, you know, uh, we also have corporate income tax, about 22%. Uh, GST about 15% as, as well as property related tax, you know, stamp duty as such about 6%. So, you know, do you think it's fair to say that, you know, some, right, raising some of these taxes, for example, GST, obviously controversial, you know, it's going to be just less popular compared to say, corporate income tax. Raising corporate income tax is something that is very easy to do because uh, we always see co companies as uh, impersonal, uh, versus say raising GST, which affects all of us, you know, the yeah. mom and pop. Go, go tax my boss, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's also important to remember that uh, when we actually tax companies, we actually make it harder or more difficult to actually do business in Singapore, which probably will affect the bottom line of companies, which includes small companies as well. Is the unhappiness about tax not so much with regards to how taxes are being raised, but actually about how the money is being spent? People may hate it because they don't necessarily understand where it's being spent. So maybe okay. there's an element to like paint it as an evil and, and or hate it if you don't understand it. Would it be too much for me to ask if for people to love taxes. So similar to evil, I think love is a strong word. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not a very personal thing that you love, right? Yeah. But I think appreciate is a, is a better word to use if we can if we know where the money is being spent, we agree with it. Um, or even if we don't fully agree, we know why, at least the reasons it's being done, then we can appreciate it a little bit better. So um based on both your experience, you know, when do you start to see people better appreciate taxes and how their tax money is being used for? So recently I had my kid. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Then you start to realise that the government actually gives a lot of grants, a lot of subsidies um, for your child. Um, one example is like a Medisave grant, yeah. right? So immediately $4,000 goes into the Medisave, starts paying for the guy's uh, or my child's yeah. MediShield life plan. And you got your CDA, you got the baby yeah. grants. So there's a lot of places where the government is actually spending, but you only realise when you hit those milestones, when okay. you buy a home, get a kid, maybe when you're, when you're ageing. I know you wrote an article recently um, and, you, and you tabulate how much subsidies a child in Singapore actually gets from the time they are born all the way till 21, you know. Um, do you think people appreciate the quantum of this subsidy? Because I, I read the article and it's quite a lot of money, I didn't realise. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was a surprise even to me while doing research for the article. So How I much How much was it? Uh, at least 150000 if you don't go for tertiary education. Oh wow. And up to 200000 and above. Per child. Per child. Per, child. per Singaporean child. Okay. And, and, and why, how, how, how did that amount come about? All the Medisafe grants, CDA grants, um, preschool subsidies, if they actually go, if, if parents actually um, go for them. Um, primary school, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. Which is compulsory year, also. Compulsory. And, and you multiply that by six years and four or five years of secondary school education, tens of thousands of dollars per child per year once again. I think some of these things, we only feel it when we hit certain milestones in life. So for example, I think for us, you know, when we were going to buy a house and then you realize that, hey, that's actually HDB grants that you can tap on that will really reduce the cost of buying a house. Uh, as you grow a bit older, you start realizing, you know, your, your parents, your grandparents, they go to the hospital a bit more and you start realizing, hey, you know, the, the healthcare, the subsidies, if they were to be in class B2 or C wards, is actually heavily subsidized. And, and I think a lot of this uh, sub subsidies, we don't really see it sometimes. 
uh, we only realize it when we go through certain stages in life. Government um, budget is pretty similar. You see where the revenue comes from, break down into where personal income tax, um, as you mentioned, property, corporate, then you see where it's being spent, right? And then it's hard to get people to appreciate it, but at least if they understand it, um, they can start to, to agree. Yeah, I think one of the challenges is that when we look at a budget, we usually think about ourselves. So what are we getting? Most of the things that make the headlines in the budgets are the new stuff, right? What's new? What's, uh, what's going to be different this year? Well, most of us neglect uh, uh, the fact that um, lots of policies that have been implemented over the past few decades, you know, even since Singapore's founding, uh, continue to require funding, continue to be run effectively uh, until today. You know, uh, tens of thousands of civil servants continue to do a good job, you know, running the country. A lot of the spending that we see in, you know, last year's budget, you know, 2019's budget about, you know, uh, tackling climate change, uh, investing uh, for, for long-term policies, you know, these are things that we may not see today. We may not even enjoy it right now, but, you know, for the next 20 years, 30 years, you know, we ultimately will be the beneficiaries of of this and so will our children. We have run out of time for today's discussion, uh, but I think we had a really good discussion. So uh, Dinesh, Kang Hyung, thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you for sharing your thoughts so candidly with the rest of Singapore. Thanks for inviting us. Our pleasure. Yeah. So we're done with the episode, but we're not done with the discussion. You know, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, feel free to drop us a comment on what you think about this topic, uh, whether you agree with our panelists or whether you, know, you have other thoughts about taxes that you want to share with us. Uh, goodbye.